call to order the regular meeting of the Emory Unified School District Board of Trustees meeting. Uh, roll call, please, Ms. Tamari. Member Ash. Here. Member Miriam. Here. Member Pats. Here. Vice President Dice. Um, here. And President Affelt is uh, away on business and can't be here. Thank you so much for that. Um, we'll now, if we'll all please stand for item B, Pledge of Allegiance. Um, we have a number of um, wonderful items this evening. Um, do we have any changes, uh, amendments to the agenda? Uh, good evening. No changes. Okay, great. Um, can I uh, ask for a motion uh, regarding the approval of the agenda? I'll motion it. I'll second. Um, any objections? Um, you have that captured? Was that member Miriam? Yes. <laughs> um, with, without exception. Um, we'll now move on to item D. This is an opportunity for members of the public to address the board on items that are not covered on this um, the agenda this evening. You may have one. No way. This your window. We only have one lovely little discussion item. You sure you wait? Uh, yeah, we have a few things here. We have a student presentation we're excited to see and scholarship presentation. Um, but this is probably the best time okay. for sure. If any other members of the public have any other items um, on things not on the agenda this evening. I don't have a place to put my paper because it's in the way. I can I'll let our IT director <laughs> help out with that. Thank you. Uh, some of you may not know me, so my name is Doug Cast. I'm a, a retired school teacher with a California teaching credential. And I've been uh, very much interested in what's going on at, at uh, Anna Yates School. I'll leave it like that. Uh, it's right next door to where I live. I care about what's happening to you parents and your children. And I'm concerned about performance over the last 10 years. Um, so I've done some research uh, uh, on the California standards uh, testing that students have been doing and at, over at Annie Yates. And my source is the California Department of Education Assessment Division. And by the way, if any of your parents want to talk to me, if you're a parent of a child at the school, you can talk, I'd be very happy to talk to you. Um, I have my name and my email here. Um, okay, this, and you can't see it, is the California Standards Test. It's a chart that I've put together, and it's a uh, percentage uh, of students both not meeting the state standards in subject areas and meeting the state standards. And it's, and it's uh, grades two to six. This is uh, uh, over a 10 year period of time. Okay, what's been happening there over the last 10 years? Uh, the subject areas are language arts, math, and science. And uh, the red is uh, percent not meeting the standard. The black is the uh, percent meeting the standard. Now, <clears throat> important to understand, <clears throat> excuse me. How, how is meeting or not meeting arrived at, all right? Instead of, uh, you know, giving teachers the students raw score to look at, you know, for parents to look at to see how they're doing, what they've done is the, the uh, students' raw scores are interpreted as levels, okay? And um, with the percentage of students uh, for each level you have one given. Minute. Mr. Cast, you have one minute. Okay, um, well, it's going to take me longer than a minute. You're not going to cut me off. It's going to take me another two or three minutes. Uh, with percentage of students that, he, and I'm sure these parents want to hear, with the percentage of students at each level. Uh, for example, third grade, that would be an example. Now, uh, 
uh, this is the 10 year average right here, and you can take a look at it. For uh, reading and language arts, those not meeting state standards, 59%. Those meeting state standards, 41%. For math, those not meeting state standards, 54%. Those not meeting state standards, 46%. Uh, uh, for science, those not meeting state standards, 69%. Those meeting, 31%. I have more of these copies if anybody wants them. Um, now, um, your three minutes is up. Okay. Um, just, I just want to ask the board right now, uh, how do you explain this? And what is your plan to turn this around, to succeed, so, so that our students at Annie Yates will perform well? Let's, make, let's, let's put this in perspective. In 10 or 15 years, if they're not meeting state standards of their, if they're not meeting the standards of the company they're working for, there's the door. So I want to know, what, what is our plan? Uh, what are you going to do to turn this around? What, what can we do to turn this around? Uh, what's a plan for our students to succeed? And please contact me. I put my name here, dougcasthotmail.com, my telephone number, 510-601-6651. If anybody wants to talk to me, if you're parents, I'll be happy to talk to you. I'm also on uh, Facebook. And you can, you can dial into me on Facebook. I love to talk to parents. I care about your child. I'm a school teacher, OK? So let me hear from you. Thank you very much. Thank you for providing that information. Appreciate your uh, comments. Are there other public comments at this time on items not on the agenda this evening? Um, you can please come and have a public comment moment, yes. <laughs> Good afternoon, Anna Yates, a uh, teacher, Audrey Miles Kindergarten. Um, I'd like to address some of the comments made uh, at the last, the last gentleman. First of all, data is not averaged over 10 years. Adver average is not how that's done. Uh, we have subcategories for students. It is done on a yearly basis, and Anna Yates has made progressive increases throughout the last five years. In fact, we received an award from the state because we are one of the districts that are increasingly lowering what we call the achievement gap. So in perspective, data cannot be averaged on a 10-year basis. If you're looking at data, you're looking at at least a, a two-year plan where you're looking at what's going to happen uh, the following year and planning. As well, we take our data as teachers at Anna Yates and we break that down into subcategories. We look at where our students are and how they're progressing. We look at students who are below basic. We provide intervention for those students. We have outside tutoring and outside community people who also support our students. So we're looking at where our students are falling short. As well, we're providing additional uh, training, like this year with the Common Core. We're looking to uh, also uh, provide, um, I guess the word should be, ways to plug where our students are failing. We're looking at the new Common Core. We're also receiving training, both in writing, language, arts, and math. So I think, yes, there is room for improvement, but looking at something on a 10-year average and saying that's a way to say that we're failing. Our last uh, testing, last year was not tested. Uh, it was a sample testing to look at what the new Common Core testing is gonna be. This year would be a better way to look at that and see how to aggregate that data. But last year, the last test we did, our scores were definitely increasing at 851, and that I'm very proud of. Thank you. Any other public comments on items not on the agenda this evening? And, um, and as uh, most know that um, the board, when you have a public comment moment, you can't engage, you're not to engage. You know, we, we wanna hear that information, but it's not an agendized item. So um, we do appreciate bringing the information and the, of having the public comments. So I did want to appreciate and acknowledge both. And I need to let the people know that I'm I appreciate that. It's just not on, it's not an agendized topic that the board can then have a conversation. Mm -hmm. so, um, okay. so, but on one-on-one, -on -one, as you pointed out, you can always try and reach out and hopefully gain some information from an individual. But just wanted to throw that out there. Um, and again, uh, as we have no additional public comment, we have, um, 
and you, and you've noted that, and they, I'm sure they've heard it. All right, so we'll now move on to item E, student presentation. Good evening. Uh, we have uh, the good fortune to have Mr. Daniel Parham, a seventh grade student at Anna Yates, who'd like to discuss some information, with, uh, present some information to the school board. Good evening. My name is Daniel Parham. I am a seventh grade student at Annie 8. I have been presented with a life-changing experience that I would like to discuss with the school board. I have the opportunity to participate in the, congr in the Congressional Civil Rights Pilgrimage in Selma, Alabama this March. I would like to represent you in this journey. I am asking you to invest in me. I participate in a leadership group called the MLK Freedom Center where we learn about our nation's civil rights activists and what they did to give the world equality. We also have opportunities to meet some of these heroes such as Dolores Huerta and Congresswoman Barbara Lee, who have both taught me so many things that have made me want to become a civil rights activist just like them. At age 12, I am one of the youngest students in this leadership group invited in March to march in Selma, Alabama with Congressional woman Barbara Lee and Congressman John Lewis from Georgia. After learning about the history in Selma, I am inspired and honored to go to Selma, Alabama. Thi in thi this, yeah. this is just the beginning of my journey as an activist. Instead of asking my parents for the $700 I will need for travel and lodging, I'm using this as an opportunity to reach out to my community. I would like, for your, I would like your support. In return of your generosity, I will return from Selma inspired and ready to present my experiences to you and my fellow students. Any amount can help me with, get me closer to this journey. Thank you for your consideration. Well, thank you, Daniel. I really am excited to um, know that you have participated in such a powerful organization, which it truly is. And um, and I've had a chance to walk the um, the bridge. It's quite amazing. I, I it's surreal, really. So I'm excited for you um, and having that opportunity to have such a humbling experience because it really is very moving. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to definitely find a way to help you. You didn't, did you give us a how, send a check to? Oh, you did. Yeah. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> okay, clear. Right you feel like I'm covered. You. Smart, <laughs> very smart move. So I'm really excited. Any other board comments? Just echoing. It's an amazing opportunity and you should feel very proud to be able to go and oh. to be as excited as you are. I think it's amazing. And Thank I you. will gladly write a check this evening. Thank you. Yeah, can we leave it with you, Ms. Tamery? Um, can we leave a check with you? I'm sorry. Okay, cool. Sorry. Except twenty. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. That's okay. Just trying to figure out a way to get the money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's amazing time to go to Alabama, mm -hmm. and do this. Um, not just because the movie has come out recently and and re-sparked the discussion, but I think Alabama is once again on the forefront of. Uh, denying civil rights and mm -hmm. really in the news lately and so you're going to get an opportunity to mm -hmm. to go there and, and 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 see firsthand not only the history but understand that it's still happening in the present and I I, I applaud you for this and and um, it's impressive mm -hmm. to me the heroes you've got to meet because there's some heroes of mine as well and I always feel fortunate to live in Barbara <laughs> Lee's district and uh, you know so I just want to encourage you and I, I you know I've already filled out my form <laughs> and so uh, I, didn't even see my form. I, I, uh, I applaud you for this and and and, and man thank you so. thank you Daniel nice job thanks for presenting exactly. Did you have anything? No, you sure? so you, I'm sure you'll get there in two seconds now you're you're, yes. you're so you're definitely so but um and if there's anyone members of the public that would like to do it perhaps we could post this on the website yeah. as well just to, for those at home so. watching um I think this is a powerful opportunity we have a 12 how 12? 12 years <laughs> please I think I was 20 something when I went so you you go that's great amazing thank you so much for sharing that thank you all right, so we'll move on to item F, scholarship presentation. Yes, good evening, uh, uh, board members. Tonight we have uh, Mr. Emilio Flores from uh, CFW, which is a company that helps us. And Mr. Flores, would you please 
come up to the podium. And maybe you could also let the board know a little bit about CFW as well, since we have some new board members. First off, uh, my name is Emilio Flores. I am executive vice president at Caldwell Flores Winters, based here in Emeryville. Uh, I must apologize uh, on the front end of this. I'm coming over an illness, and uh, so if I cough, if I if I do things like that, I, I do apologize ahead of time. I'm joined this evening by my colleague Steve Splinsky. He's one of our analysts over at Caldwell Flores Winters. Uh, CFW has served the district as uh, financial advisor for over a decade. Uh, we have partnered with the, our hometown school district. We are located over at 6425 Christie Ave. Uh, we used to be over at 2200 Powell Street. Uh, but um, we have partnered with the district uh, in support of the Emory Education uh, Foundation uh, for over 20 years. We've assisted the district in the successful passage of Measure J, the district's general obligation bond program, as well as the district's parcel tax. In 2008, Ernesto Flores, one of our company's founders, and happens to also be my father, uh, and Barbara Renteria, my mother, uh, established the CFW Foundation. The mission of the foundation is to provide scholarships and assistance to deserving graduating students pursuing post-secondary education, as well as those pursuing technical and career training in the communities that we have, have been fortunate enough to serve. Since 2008, the CFW Foundation has made $50,000 in scholarships available to graduating seniors on an annual basis. These scholarships have traditionally ranged from $1,000 to $5,000 and are designed to assist students with course registration, transportation, required texts, technology, and living expenses that may not be traditionally covered by an institution's financial aid package. Additionally, the foundation provides assistance to students looking to continue post-secondary education in, techn in technical and vocational fields such as the culinary arts, music, video game animation, cosmology, and even truck driving, because these students have traditionally been underserved. However, we have also had our share of CFW scholars that have gone on to attend UCs, CSUs, and other prestigious universities throughout the country and abroad. In Emory Unified's case, a graduate from each class since 2011 has received a CFW Foundation scholarship. Uh, to date, Emory students have received $7,500 in scholarships to pursue the culinary arts, video game design, and attend traditional two-year and four-year college programs. Tonight, I'm here to honor yet another outstanding Emory student. This young woman, woman's application exudes perseverance and academic excellence. Her essay demonstrates a passion for performance and dancing. It is clear that she does not intend to limit herself to one passion, as she listed potential career interests in being a sports doctor, psychologist, and professional dancer. I think she can do all three. Uh, she wants to attend a four-year university to continue improving herself and ensure that she is able to capitalize on the opportunities to make her life and her family's life better. As a resident of Emeryville and a member of the scholarship committee, her essay made me proud of the work being done here in Emeryville and at schools. And with that, I would like to present China Kane Ross with a CFW Foundation scholarship in the amount of $3,000. We have a beautiful fake check for you. Look, before you go, before you go, yes. you know, we, you know, we want to hear, we want to hear from you. I think it's, again, congratulations. We are so excited for you. And um, since you have a number of aspirations, we are curious how things are going this your senior year and give us a little bit about you. <laughs> so this year has been very, very busy. Um, I've been not getting sleep because I'm doing so many scholarships, trying to just make sure that everything is planned out and I'm not struggling next year. Um, but like, I'm having fun being the ASB president over there. We're doing a lot of things right now, a lot of fundraisers for the school. Um, dancing, of course, working out, training, 
and studying, taking extra classes, just trying to prepare myself for next year. And I'm very excited for what the rest of the year has to come and for next year. So, and I'm very proud that I got this award. It meant a lot. Of, uh, it meant a lot to me. So, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you also. Thank you so much for um, ensuring our students are uh, partners in every sense of the way. Definitely appreciate it. Any comments from bo the board at all? Yeah, I'll say something. I want to congratulate uh, China on her uh, her endowment and that um, with CFW providing the uh, the source of resources for your, your 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 new journey as you approach your graduation from Emory. Um, but you'll be looking forward to a, a bright future. So awesome! Love the presentations, two for two. All right. Um, we now are moving on to item um, uh, G. Oh, I'm sorry, public comment related to the scholarship presentation. Okay, so I heard the presenter talking about uh, Measure K and and uh, yeah, the parcel tax. And so I have uh, three points I'd like to make. Okay, I just found out, I just found out recently uh, that um, there's a document that exists, and I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard tell of it. So uh, insofar that it, this is true, this document exists, uh, this is reprehensible. And that is that the measures, the parcel tax measure A, the first iteration and the second iteration, uh, had language in them that said that the seniors applying for a senior exemption only have to apply one time and then they're taken care of for the duration of the parcel tax. And yet this district told seniors, citizens here in Emeryville, that they have to apply yearly. So that's pretty bad. <laughs> As a matter of fact, that's very bad because there probably were a lot of seniors that believed it when they, when they, when uh, Superintendent Lindo told them that, and uh, Board President Josh Simon uh, also told the to, to, told seniors that. And so, insofar that they believed it, probably several of them, several of them did it, and maybe some didn't renew and then we're charged money inadvertently so I'm going to get to the bottom of this it's uh, you know it's reprehensible you know I, the 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 superintendent is is paid to tell us the truth and so I mean I don't know they're paid to know this kind of this kind of thing this kind of detail so all I can assume is I I, I got to call that a lie the super the former superintendent lied to uh, the people the seniors of Emeryville. that's pretty pretty bad uh, and then I just found out that the current superintendent, uh, Mr. Rubio. Uh, we have one minute. Thank you. The current superintendent took away, changed the language from uh, the first two iterations of Measure A, uh, uh, moving over to Measure K, the new parcel tax uh, that we voted for. The new superintendent, Mr. Rubio, took away the former ability for seniors to, uh, uh, to apply for an exemption if they were renters, not homeowners. And apparently that has been taken away in the new Measure K language, and I got to find out for sure about that. So I'm going. I'm in the process of investigating. But insofar that that's true, you know, I'd like. To, I want to know why. Why would? Why would you do that? Uh, why did you? It seems sort of like you know unfair to seniors. I don't know why you would do that. Uh, and then the last thing I wanted to say about the about uh, Measure K, the parcel tax is that I found out that the dist district is not required to hire a music teacher. You're out of time. Thank you. Not required, but it says very clearly in the, in the Measure K ballot language that we voted on that we're going to get a mu music teacher. Now I find out that we don't have to get it. And so if we don't get it and you use that language or you, that, the, the fact that you're legally not forced to, I call that lying to the voters. And you know, I, I, you know, I, I think we, should, we need to get some explanations here but I'm going to be investigating this moving forward. In the meanwhile, anything you can say to elucidate, uh, well, I would appreciate. 
Thanks. All right, Madam Again, President. Um, sure. I'm going to just say something really quickly. Sure. So, uh, Mr. Donahue, you, you like the phrase poetically connected, and I'm going to take a moment here. I want to apologize to Ms. Kane Ross, and I, I apologize that that happened on your moment because you, what you did is awesome, and you shouldn't have to suffer through bad poetry. And I apologize for, you know, this moment. I, I, I think it's atrocious that you would use this moment to step on a student, and I just, I, I, yeah, that's exactly my point, is it had nothing to do with them. And I'm sorry, I know we're not supposed to comment, but. You took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah, no, I I'm, appreciate that. you know, you could have waited for the next item and poetically connected there. So, yeah, sorry. And again, really think what you're doing and what you've done is quite phenomenal, and really excited to hear about your journey, coming, your steps forward, and what comes next, so. Um, Yes, yes, Please. and definitely every, um, I know I'm sure there's like 20 places you're going to get into, so we want to know the list, so just throw that out there. China, I'm very excited for your future, and uh, uh, Mr. Flores, I want to just thank CFW again for all the support over the years and uh, helping us with uh, our financial uh, work and uh, for supporting our students through the scholarship. All right, thank you all, thank you again. All right, we'll now move on to uh, reports. Uh, any member from CSDA, member from ETA, our student rep who's missing this evening, um, superintendent's report. Yes, good evening, everyone. Uh, I just want to uh, re report on uh, two things. Um, um, actually, I'm going to report on one. I think I'll wait for the board president to return before reporting on, on, on the uh, the, the DC work that we did last couple of days, but I want to report on the February 5th and February 6th days where school was closed last week. Um, we um, uh, actually I, I made a copy t tonight for one of our community members, but uh, we got very high reviews from most of the staff. Um, it's, it's tough sometimes putting K through 12 teachers and making sure you, you can address everybody's needs, but uh, the teachers seemed very excited and enthused. Uh, I got a lot of emails. I think I may have this in my board update. I got a lot of emails asking for support and materials, so we ordered those today. And, be, and teachers want to look at them over the break next week, so, uh, so they're raring to go on, on helping uh, improve their strategies with writing. So uh, I think it was uh, well worth the two days, and I appreciate I know may, may hopefully it wasn't too hard on our parent community, but I really appreciate uh, the fact that uh, the teachers came out and worked so hard and uh, were able to take away some good work. So I wanted just to take a moment to report on that. Great. And there's no board president's report this evening. I have no, <laughs> no messages that have been sent my way. <laughs> All right, so we'll now move on to the consent calendar. Are there any items um, board members wish to pull from the consent calendar this evening? Hearing none, we'll, we'll, um, uh, can I get a motion on items one through six? I'll move. Approval. I'll second. Any objections? Um, we'll have a roll call, please, Ms. Tamarie. Member Ash? Yes. Member Miriam? Yes. Member Pats? Yes. Vice President Dice? Yes. And the, a uh, recap, thank you. The, the board has approved by roll call vote items one through six on the consent calendar. Thank you, Ms. Tamarie. So we'll move to our only discussion action item this evening, which I believe is purely a discussion item. Um, ECCL update various ongoing project activity status report. Miss Tamery is going to re retrieve Mr. Baker. Okay. Do you need, you okay? I'm just going to walk him out. I, I don't think Mr. Baker was anticipating the, the pace of the meeting. <laughs> Oh, okay. Actually, let's see.
Yeah. You were you were blessed. You were blessed, man. I'm talking about. Oh. I got. Yeah, no problem. I just I was annoyed. I like Brian, but this was just to do it. Bad is bad. No, no, no. How's it going? Yeah, yeah, no, it's not. Yeah, this is this is her moment of coming and getting an award. Yeah, yeah. You know, she kind of she's slightly shattered, but she's she's strong. Oh, she's tough. She's gonna test me. Yeah, yeah. You know, she's tough. Congratulations, Dan. From the beginning. From the very beginning. Yep. Yep. So whatever they say. Yeah. All right, Mr. Baker, you ready to go? Hey, thanks, Mr. Ross. Thank you. You need help? Oh, oh, laptop. I have it. You need a laptop? No. Oh, you sure did. Plug it back in, though, because he's going to run out of juice. We are moments away from the fi the next item. Sorry, I thought it was up at 740. Hey, I love the time. You guys are, you know, this is how it should be. Is this on? You should send out the place to go Although I think I can be long-winded, too. I should I'm going to glance at the house. No, I can't imagine. No, no. Yeah. You keep it moving along. Oh, I tell you. All right, are we ready? We have our IT support. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. So we'll now move on to the next item, which is item uh, I1 ECCL update. We have Mr. Baker present. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, so this is the uh, monthly ECCL update. Uh, well, there's been quite a bit happening since we last did our presentation, so you'll see that in the presentation tonight. Uh, first construction update, if you've been by the site, you've seen that it's a lot busier than it has ever been. Uh, in Building E, mechanical electrical is in progress. Um, that's all the plumbing, electrical, and HVAC for the gym building. Uh, the Building E addition the, at, the nor at the east end of Building E is now um, they're laying out foundations and all that demolition is complete, so that's underway. Site utility progress is the main activity right now. Um, that's on-site sewer, uh, power, water, um, all those uh, activities. Uh, Turner sequenced the work. We have, we're still, we've just about got our encroachment permit from Caltrans, so they've been sequencing work on site to start that utility work and then do the street connections afterwards, which has been a logistical challenge, but it's al now allowing us to maintain the schedule for the high school. Um, the high school underground utilities are complete, so all of the plumbing, electrical um, work underneath the high school is done. High school concrete slab pour, this says it has a, a date of 223. Um, that's actually, uh, because of the rain, we lost a couple days, and that's actually really the foundation pour. Um, there, the slab is in, two, is in two phases. There's a, what's called a rat slab, an under, a, a kind of a base slab and then the, the finished slab follows that. But the big concrete, the main concrete pour, which will be only during one day and during a weekday, will take place probably on the 25th of February now because we lost a couple days due to the rains over the weekend. Um, steel delivery will be at the end of this month. Um, steel erection will start in the fir during the first week in March. Um, we're anticipating that we will be what's called topped at where steel framing is complete um, around April 1st for the high school. Um, so that'll be a, a big change um, that everyone will see, um, and, and, uh, and that, that'll be a really good milestone. The uh, design update, uh, pool renovation is currently out to bid. Um, we should have those numbers in by, uh, uh, by the end of this month, um, that they're being bid with a completion date of August 1st, so we can maintain schedule. Um, so that'll come back to you. That'll be a significant change. We'll come back to the board uh, in uh, March. The health center design has been signed off. Uh, we are meeting, I believe it's next week, to finalize the furniture for the health center. Um, library is under construction. Um, the library operation is still being to, um, uh, worked on by the city, uh, but that uh, the design is complete and the construction is in progress because that's the first floor of Building D, the high school. Uh, look ahead schedule, and again, this has shifted a, a few days because of the rain. Um, building E, uh, mechanical electrical plumbing work is the rough-in work, what they call rough-in, where they put all that in. It will be done uh, this month. Um, exterior, interior framing um, is starting now, and that's, there's not a whole lot of that, but framing new walls inside the, high, inside the again, building E is the gym. Of uh, the building E addition, which is uh, the, um, again, the, the west, I'm sorry, the east side of the gym, uh, the, the mechanical electrical plumbing work is actually just about done right now. Um, and they have, a, again, well that, that's the underground work so that they can pour the slab. 
and foundations. Um, and then the building E structural and framing, the exterior walls are going to start. Um, they will start this month and we'll finish up towards the end of next month. Um, site utilities for buildings uh, B and D are going to are just about done. Um, it's, uh, they're done at building D, the high school. Building B is the admin building, which is along uh, San Pablo. That's finishing up this week. Um, site utilities for buildings A and C. A is the is the uh, the community building at the corner of 53rd and San Pablo, and C is the K through 8 school. Those will be done by the end of the month. Um, and the the footing layout and excavation for buildings A, B, and C will be also done by the end of the month. Um, building D concrete form work is underway. Uh, again, the concrete pour, the main concrete pour, which is the foundations, will be the week of the 23rd. Um, and steel erection will start at the beginning of next month and continue through March. So those are the upcoming things over the next eight weeks. Here's some photographs. Uh, the, the, all the trailers are actually on site. This is the city's, uh, this, um, this is the district and city's trailers is where we reside along with our inspectors of record and our testing lab. Um, this is a, these are now shots of the inside of the gym. We've demo is complete, so this is up in the ceiling, showing the ceiling, which is all the abatement is complete. Um, and so this is where a new ceiling will go, um, where the existing one was before, but which had a, a, um, asbestos in it, which has all now been uh, removed. You'll see this is the, uh, what we call the site utility. This is the site utility. This is the, the, the big duct bank coming in from uh, 47th, and this is where it enters. This is the edge of the building E gym addition, and then the other lines continue. Um, this is, again, uh, the building E addition. So you can see in this photograph that the demolition of the existing has been complete where those windows are. Um, if you look at the chalk lines on the, the ground, that's the layout for the, the foundations. And if you squint real hard, you can see some uh, some utilities popping up on, out of the ground there. Um, this is building A, so you can see those things that those pipes sticking up. Um, that is on the right, plumbing, and on the left, electrical. So all those lines are running underground and then come up, come up out of the ground and go in the building. And then you can see some trenching there. Um, some of the, those are the the trenching. They're backfilling the trenches for utilities. Um, so this is the height of the side of the high school, and again, these, these pictures are about a week and a half old. Um, this is the building, this is the, the high school foundation, so you can see that's all that was all laid out about a week and a half ago, and now they're digging those, um, those this week, and that's where the concrete will be poured on the main pour on the, on the, the week of the 23rd. Um, this, these are the site utilities of the big electrical duct bank, so oh, right now we're at the, uh, at between buildings A, which is in the foreground, and B, which is in the background. So our site, our main electrical duct bank is now all the way over across San Paolo to where building A is. And you see those chalk lines, that's actually the layout of the foundations for building A, which is the community building. So the, the site utilities are going kind of fast and furious. Um, we did get a, a couple days of late because of weather. They're back out there today, uh, but they're going pretty fast on, on this work. Um, this is the drain line along San Pablo. So this is actually along uh, building B, the admin building. The high school is in the background. Um, and you can see that they've just got this trench shored up and then the, 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 the perimeter drainage is what that, that pipe is you see going in there. This is the community building, building A at the corner of uh, 53rd and San Pablo with its foundations all laid out. Um, they're, they're some areas we've had to, again, to work around the, the site utility work, not being able to make the connections on, on San Pablo. They sequence work differently, so we're way ahead of schedule, actually, on the building A layout, but our sewer connections are going to be about two months later than we thought. So it's just where a res uh, there's a big resequencing going on. Um, the, everyone is on board that the main goal is the high school, making sure the high school is on schedule um, because of the, the, the timeline for that project. Um, so uh, we've, we're in the midst of quite a few, bit of work on the furniture, fixtures, and equipment. Um, the city and district review of the furniture program is complete. The only exception to that is that we are, again, meeting next week with the health center to do the uh, uh, confirm the furniture on that floor along with counseling. So it's the second floor of the, of the admin building, Building B. Um, the confirmation of data telecommunications, audiovisual, and security systems is in progress. Uh, we did one of these, a round of this confirmation last summer when we were negotiating the Turner contract. Now we're confirming those. Again, the technology for this stuff changes rapidly. Um, now that Dr. Rubio is on board, we're involving him and we're reviewing all those uh, systems with him. Um, and we, if we want to make any decisions, any changes, we need to make them now. And so that's <coughs> the purpose of doing that. 
Um, we are, we're, the furniture procurement options are under study. We have a, a, a two or three <coughs> different ways of going, so we're working with district council to confirm what, 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 what we can do and also our consultant, MK Think. Um, next step will be the furniture specifications. Whichever procurement option we use, the, the MK Think will need to actually spec out what, 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 we have a program that says chair, table, desk, and some manufacturers, but we need to confirm those specs so that we have a procurement document. And again, there are three primary packages. Because the, the project opens in three phases, the gym pool first, then the high school, and then buildings A, B, and C, which are the K through eight school, the community building, and the admin building. So we're gonna procure this in three packages also. The first will be the gym pool, which so we, our timeline is we need to get that package done so we can procure it uh, by April, and it, you know, in a couple months, so that it's in the process. Um, so that's kind of our, our hot item right now is to do that. Although the good thing is it's not very much. It's a pretty small, it's our smallest, our smallest package. And then there's the schedule, which we've all seen, which I know that the board has seen for quite some time. Again, the things in kind of the light gray are, are complete. And so, uh, the, again, the primary construction contract is well underway. And then you can see our, our, the second row to the, from the bottom is our furniture fixtures and equipment. And again, between now and April, we need to bid or procure the gym pool uh, equipment. Uh, between May and August, we will be installing the gym pool equipment and then procuring um, the Building D, um, uh, um, the Building D high school uh, uh, furniture, furniture. Then between September and December, we install the, the uh, furniture in the high school and we'll, we'll procure the furniture buildings A, B, and C. And then, it, and then the first half of next year is when we'll install the remainder of the furniture. So again, that we've, we, we've determined that there will be three, three packages that we'll be procuring. Uh, and that is it for the update and any questions or discussions that you'd like to have. Correct. I had a um, question actually about the, um, you, you mentioned the phases in terms of the um, FF&E mm -hmm. um, furniture, fixture, equipment. But in terms for the gym, I was curious, is that for the um, entire program or, you know, what the school intends to offer on that site or is it more like, you know, certain main elements or desks? It's just every, <laughs> everything, everything in the existing gym and the little addition and the pool, that would be that, that, that group, of, group of equipment. And there's not, there's not a lot of it. It does include, though, um, some athletic equipment okay. and some things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's not a lot of furniture really in that building okay. per se. It's mostly um, 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 mostly things you would find at a gym. Yeah, and it's I remember like weights and you know uh, what was there before the you We've know what was there. A lot of the, the building E is really more. Uh, most of what's going on in building e is moving in. We are, are some new things. Mm -hmm. Most of the new stuff is related to the pool. Okay. Uh, so there's some things that are going to be moving in there that are existing and some things we'll be procuring new. Okay. And, uh, and just to add, uh, uh, Mr. President, um, we uh, recently had Mr. Ferber, the principal of the high schools in the audience. Good evening, Mr. Ferber. Uh, Mr. Ferber had the good fortune to uh, come into contact with a gentleman who's closing a few of his gyms. And so, and we were also getting a lot of parent requests in the last month, a month and a half, regarding uh, having no athletic equipment mm. for the uh, athletes at the high school. So we were able to procure about $25,000 worth of uh, equipment for $5,000 mm -hmm. $5 or $6,000. So about, is that about, I have numbers about right. And uh, Mr. Ferber was uh, good enough to send me the pictures. He checked it out. And, uh, and he has, Mr. Ferber also has a good background in this area as well. So uh, uh, we now are setting up a room with some equipment that will be open and, and, and some uh, commercial level machines that we'll be able to bring over to the uh, oh, site as well. Great. Um, well, and you know, because um, just, not, I mean, you're not, you're not gonna have it all. I'm just curious in terms of um, uh, if this particular set or these set of buildings are very much in terms of community realm, in terms of functionality and use, um, what does that, you know, what is that program like? Because I don't remember at this point, you know, um, you know, what the offerings were, because I know a lot of it's gonna be, um, you know, we talk about the usability. Um, the school's gonna have a portion of the space, but then, you know, what programs are gonna be available for seniors or um, community members? So um, at some point, and maybe that's 
city school meeting for sure. Yeah, that's but um, but just to look at what does that look like? You know, what type of offerings are we talking about, and what kind of equipment? You know, would people right. kind of have awareness of that they'd be able to access in that? Yeah, space mo and most of that most of that equipment is being we're we're working with Cindy Montero on. It's really a city program. Um, in terms of programs, I confess I'm not sure what program yeah, offerings yeah, yeah. are planned. I wouldn't we, set you up for it. But right I think now. that I think that uh, that's a good city schools discussion. Yeah. yeah, I think it'll help just to get people kind of primed because it is going to be something that's open or fa it's phase open. It's first. the first thing that opens, right? Yeah, so it'll yeah. be great to get some um, understanding and clarity right. around what exactly does that mean, and right. you know what how people can plug in. I heard plug in somewhere, but how people can plug in, mm -hmm. um, you know, and what they can anticipate um, now that it's so close to it. So I just wanted to throw that out. Um, any other questions, um, comments for Mr. Baker on where we are? And we have signage coming. Yes, yeah, so we, did t we, we, we uh, confirmed this week that we've got, we've got half of, we, we, the, the plan has been installed two large banner signs at each corner at 53rd and 47th. We confirmed uh, this week that the, the, there's an existing fence that's gonna stay now that building A is laid out the, at the corner of 47th. So we have the art, and so I need to work with, do a final approval from city planning, and then we can order that sign up, and that will go at, at, the, at that corner. So as you come down San Pablo, you'll see it. And the other corner, we still need to get our Caltrans encroachment permit to know what we can do with our fence there. And we're about a day away from getting that. Um, and, um, and then we can we can then we'll determine that. So that will probably follow. We'll probably order them at the same time and put the, the one at 47, 40, excuse me, 53rd up first. Great. Great. Well, I'm, I'm looking for us to be as graphic as Esquila yes. Bilingua, which is like vibrant, just like right there. You know where you're going. Yeah, so we're ordering two <laughs> signs that are six feet high and 30 feet long. Okay. So that should be okay. pretty good. You can guess who picked those dimensions, probably. <laughs> yeah, I have a question uh, for you, uh, Mr. Baker. Um, regarding the uh, pool uh, improvements. Um, your did you do a uh, final construction uh, uh, estimate on that? So uh, the uh, the pool consultant did provide an estimate. Mm -hmm. um, they they there were some things which were uh, added. We, we've got a couple of alternates that are were um, added during the design. One is an add alternate, which is replaced the pool deck, mm -hmm. and the other is a deduct alternate, but. We're, we added the scope, which was we did a, um, a, uh, I, and I, uh, the name of the, the we did a, a uh, better perimeter drain system that was not in the original <coughs> scope of work. We added that we're bidding it as a deduct alternate uh, because the city has, has told so the city requested that we do that uh, uh, change that drainage system to uh, to improve the drain the, the drainage system in the new pool. What did you have as far as an estimate versus the uh, the impact to the budget? Um, so we have we have in the budget we've we've uh, have a line, had a line item of seven hundred thousand dollars, which is the estimate produced by the pool consultant. We've procured some of that. We've procured the design fees, and also the abatement of the uh, of the boiler room where the equipment will go. So we've bought out some of that stuff already, and the remainder is out to bid right now. And then with that in mind, um, how is that encroaching upon the lease leaseback allowances? That's not, it's not really impacting the lease leaseback allowances. That's not, that will be done as a change order to Turner's contract. That's not, that scope of work is not in their contract right now. Okay. So it's going to be above and beyond the Yes, it's in, the, it's in our overall project budget. It is not in the lease leaseback agreement. Okay. The only thing that is actually technically is the change order we gave Turner for, we two change orders, one for the abatement of the boiler room. So that's been complete now, mm -hmm. and that's part of that budget, and also the mechanical electrical plumbing design work because it's done design build and under their subcontractors. And then finally, the status of approval with the Division of State Architect, where do you stand with that? So we are submitting a CCD, a construction change directive, at the same time, uh, that's actually being issued next week with a final piece of the bid documents. So Turner's bidding out the MEP trades right now. Um, the final piece is the pool drawings themselves which we will have next week and that when that goes to Turner that goes in as a CCD to DSA and also to the health department as well. Hmm. Any other questions? Any public comment on this particular item? No? Thank you Mr. Baker for providing Thank you. that update. Appreciate it. Um, we'll actually now move on to the hot topics of the evening and I can't find it. 
Board reports and announcements. <laughs> Any more reports and announcements? And, um, and I'll just note, Don and I actually had a facilities committee mm -hmm. meeting and um, had a slight preview of the presentation this evening. Correct. And I think one, um, one additional part is that uh, uh, the district, along with um, uh, Mr. Baker and his team, have um, worked hard on absolutely looking at every single invoice and work order related to this project from 2009 at some point uh, in order to um, move all of the accounting into the format that would allow us to become um, eligible for uh, additional funding from the state should that opportunity happen. So, um, which is a, a, actually a common um, system or common tool, and that will be um, brought to the board and council um, uh, as they're still trying to make sure the categor categories are in the right places and different things. Um, but that information is um, soon to be come to the board and to the district, or excuse me, to the board and to council, and likely at city schools at some point in the future, um, near future. So that's the other right. thing. Add anything else? Yeah. Any other board reports announcements? Okay, all right, I think I'm borrowing because my, my iPad froze. Um, calendar review item K. Uh, we have a special meeting of the board on, is that Saturday, February 21? Um, thank you for not Valentine's Day, not that I had plans necessarily. Um, and then a uh, regular board meeting follows February 25th. Um, we have a finance committee meeting um, prior to that uh, February 25th meeting at 4.45. And um, we're now actually going to um, Move to closed session. Record time.